As a follow-up to my last video on fixing a bug with the modern table control, I also wanted to look at some of the new features that are available. Um, these have just been added in the latest Power App Studio version, so you'll need either version 103 or later uh, to take advantage of these. And you can, of course, switch your version by going to Settings, then Support, and set the authoring version to, again, 103 or later. Uh, you know, just be warned, these are preview features, preview versions, so it's always a good idea to test them in a sandbox application before you try using them in your production apps. There are really three main new features with the modern table control that are worth noting. Uh, we can select different date and time formats for date, time, and date only fields. Uh, the column widths can also now be resized by the end user using a kind of an interface rather than dragging the, the column headers. And most importantly now we can enable multi-selection for the records in our table. First we'll take a look at the new date and time formats. So looking at the properties of the table, uh, we can see two options now for date time format and date only format. So these give us the option to choose from long or short dates, or if the field is a date and time field, we also get the option for short date and time. So as we change these options, you know, we can see how they're reflected in the table control. Next, if we play our app, we can test out the new ability to set a column's width using a value rather than just dragging the column headers. So if we click on one of the column headers, we can see the new column width option. And selecting this, we'll see that the user can input a preferred width. Now, at the time of recording this, it does appear that you can only adjust the width using the up and down arrows. But I would expect this to allow typed values in the future. Finally, we'll look at the new multi-selection feature. So this is one of those features that you know, I've certainly been waiting for for a long time, and I'm very happy to see it now. Um, so looking at the properties of the table, we can see the new Enable Multi-Select option. That's under Behavior. So setting this to Yes, we'll immediately see that the checkboxes show next to each of the table rows. And if we play our app, we can now select multiple records, and the count of those records that are selected is shown at the bottom of the table. These records are then exposed to us through the selected items property of the table. This also works when the table reflows for small screen devices, but there appears to be some buggy behavior with records not being properly selected. So this could just be a visual issue in the studio player or uh, it could be something that they fix in a future update. Now let's look at a use case for this multi-select feature. So on the screen, we can see a table that's pointed to our Dataverse table for products. And you know we might wanna take some sort of action against the selection of these products. And in this case, we'll say that we want to inactivate some of them. So we'll insert a button control into this container that I have set up for some other buttons and filters, and we'll name this button inactivate. I'll also add an icon and change the base color palette to red to indicate that we're inactivating the selected records. For the on select property of the button, we'll use the update if function. And for the first argument, we'll specify our products table as the data source. And then for the criteria for you know what we want to update the records in the products table by, uh, we'll want to check if the unique ID or the GUID of the record is found in the list of GUIDs from our selected items of the table. And if that's true, then we want to update the status column of those records to the inactive choice. We'll select format text and then we can see our full formula here. If we play our app now, you can see that as we select records and we click on the button, their status is now updated to inactive. In a production application, we may want to implement some safeguards to prevent users from clicking the button when we don't want them to. 
So in this case, you know, we wouldn't want the button to be selected unless there were actually items selected in the table. And we would want to make sure that all of the items that have been selected are in the active status. In other words, we wouldn't want to update inactive records if their status is already inactive. There are a number of ways that you could accomplish this, but we'll just use one example. So we can select our button controls display mode property and we could use the following formula. So if the selected items of the table is not empty and the row count of the selected items with a status of inactive is equal to zero, meaning that none of the selected items are inactive already, then we want the display mode of the button to be edit and otherwise it should be disabled. Playing our app now, we can see that the button is disabled when no items are selected. And if I select some rows that are currently active, then the button is now clickable. As soon as I select a record that is already inactive, now the button becomes disabled. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for future videos. If you're having trouble with the modern table control, be sure to drop a comment below and we can see if there's any temporary fixes that you could use while they continue to improve this control.